فكان أحسن خلق الله كلهم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your fasting, to accept your listening and recitation of the Holy Qur'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your du'as, to accept your generous givings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our homes with guidance, love, tolerance and mercy. Ameen Allahumma, Ameen. Beloved brothers and respected sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam at home. After all the distractions and his daily involvements, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, visiting the sick, welcoming delegations, giving da'wah to his community, going back and visiting Qiba and remaining there through Friday, going into Saturday sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Saturday morning throughout the day, and continuous, subhanAllah, sacrifice and giving all the stories that you've heard in the past. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam eventually will end up at home. Regardless of what his schedule was and how involved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, he will end up at home. Before entering his house, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the moment he arrives at his doorstep, before walking into his hujra, to his small house, called his room, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the first thing he would do is that he would stop for a moment, take out his siwak, and brush his teeth. Subhanallah. Can you imagine this is a sunnah that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always engaged in. Upon entering his house, before walking in through those doors, he would take out his siwak and he would brush his teeth sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was consistent in doing so. Subhanallah, what we learn from this, brothers and sisters, is preparation. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was preparing himself physically, emotionally, mentally, before entering his house. Now the mood completely changes. The mindset completely changes. The thawb of Muhammad Rasulullah outside, the messenger of Allah, is no longer the messenger of Allah inside the house. He is the husband that takes on tasks and responsibilities. And this was the first step to prepare the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He would always brush his teeth sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when entering another ibadah. He would begin with wudu, he ends up with wudu, now he's walking into his salah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before making wudu, before his transition sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his bed to performing wudu, he would brush his teeth sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walking into the masjid, before starting his salah and before saying Allahu Akbar, as he says, Istawu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and he reminds the people of staying connected. Before saying Allahu Akbar, he takes out his siwak and he brushes his teeth. This is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would prepare himself going on the list of ahadith. This was his form of preparation, mentally, physically, and emotionally. So he would brush his teeth, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now the mood completely changes. Don't take the responsibilities and the tasks that Allah has placed on your shoulder into your house. Many of us, brothers and sisters, can easily give up those tasks. We control our schedules. Some people, subhanAllah, they may find that difficult. They have their own call that weekend. But each and every one that is listening, for the most of you, there are times where you can walk into that door preparing yourself mentally for what's going to happen inside. And this was sunnah, the idea of preparation is sunnah, that you prepare yourself before going into the house. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was well prepared. And that doesn't mean that he was free from any family conflict, but he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to deal with it. Sometimes you go into the house and you're still distracted 
throughout the day, what happened, your losses, and then you walk with all of that stress into the house to find a spouse that is already stressful with all the responsibilities he or she has, and suddenly there's a conflict. But he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would prepare himself with that siwak. And of course, this is a form of beautifying himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, he was very clean. So number one, he would take out his siwak, he would brush his teeth. Number two, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say the dua. This is before walking in. He would say, Bismillah. Brothers and sisters, Bismillah, this is key. Reviving your home with dhikr. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haunted homes, brothers and sisters, where shaitan lies. This is where shaitan is. In the absence of dhikr, we have homes filled with jinn and shayateen, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would begin his own house before, upon entering, he would, uh, he would say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his own house, the Prophet's home sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would say, Bismillah. He would begin with dhikr, reminding himself that everything that he is doing is for Allah. You know, a lot of the times people complain about each other, the spouses, there's a clash, the husband about his wife and the wife about her husband and the parents about their children and the children about their parents. Everyone is complaining, right? You have these groups, uh, subhanAllah, among our communities and the world that have some conflict. Bismillah, brothers and sisters, is to remind you and I that we are doing this for the sake of Allah. That everything you are doing, you are asked to engage in this conflict through the lens of ibadah. You're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person wanted to do jihad and he comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do you have living parents? He says, yes ya Rasulullah, my parents are still living. قَالَ فَفِيهِمَا فَجَاهِدْ فَبِرُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ هُنَا كَانَ أَعْظَمْ مِنَ الْجِهَادِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, go to your parents and perform jihad by honoring your parents. Sometimes your parents may say things you don't agree with. You may not find it relevant, but it is a form of mujahada and a form of worship to listen to your parents. And this is why marriage, brothers and sisters, is half of faith because you have to deal with your spouse and consider everything that is happening as a form of ibadah. If you're just dealing with it because you have to deal with it, you will eventually fail. But to know this is a ibadah that you need to perform, seeking excellence, seeking ihsan, doing it for the sake of Allah, remaining patient for the sake of, sake of Allah, knowing that you're able to respond, but you refrain and you control yourself and suppress your anger, all of that is for the sake of Allah. Everything begins to change. One's understanding completely changes. He would say, Bismillah. And then he would say, Bismillahi wa lajna. Oh Allah, Bismillah, I walk in. And in the name of Allah, I walk out. In Allah, we have our trust. SubhanAllah, the Prophet says that a person that enters his or her house and they say, Bismillah, just that, Bismillah. قَالَ يَقُولُ الشَّيْطَانَ لَا مَبِيتَ وَلَا عَشَاءَ بِمُجَرَّدِ أَنَّهُ أَوْ أَنَّهَا بَسْمَلَتْ خلاص يقول الشيطان لا مبيت ولا عشاء الشياطين تخرج Just by saying Bismillah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, said that all the shayateen leave and the shaytan himself says in this home we will no longer sleep nor eat so to protect our homes by saying Bismillah, those that have conflict, also with the marital counseling and seeking assistance, put some dhikr in it. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the process. And after making this dua, the first thing he would utter and the first thing he would say is Assalamu alaikum. This is a hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. Kana yastaku sallallahu alayhi wa sallama thumma yad'u thumma yaw... This in order. Bismillah, he would brush his teeth. Bismillah, including the dua. And then he would say, Assalamu alaikum. This is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that if you enter homes, say assalamu alaikum. SubhanAllah, what this does, number one, is that it gives the person in front of you the sense of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Every time we go outside in public and we say assalamu alaikum, this is the call for peace. This is us telling people that Islam is a peaceful religion. Why isn't this call a call of peace the moment you enter your house? What's the difference between that salam and the salam you say in interfaith gatherings or the salam you say in the masjid? It all carries the same message. And it must play its role in one's heart as he or she say assalamu alaikum. And subhanAllah, for those whom have cut ties, assalamu alaikum is said to reconnect that disconnection. People haven't been talking. If people, you can say, boycotted each other for a few days. They assalamu alaikum. You reconvene. You reconnect with your spouse. And what is the response to that salam as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taught in the Quran? فَإِذَا حُيِّيتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا That when you and I hear the salam, our responsibility is to respond to that salam, if not better. So either you say, وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ Or you say, وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ or you say, wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You respond in a beautiful manner. SubhanAllah, even in times of conflict, we are asked to say assalamu alaykum. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say that going into every house, every room, regardless of what just took place, regardless of, regardless of all the conflict, regardless of all the arguments, he would always begin his entry by saying assalamu alaykum and giving the promise of peace. Hopefully, inshallah, this brings families together. Hopefully, the, the Prophet wasallam taught you and I a lesson that it is our responsibility to bring our hearts together, to collectively unify our, our, uh, this institution, this family institution, and, and subhanAllah, this responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on our shoulders. What does he do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when, enters, when entering his home? What are his a'mal? Uh, what were his tasks and responsibilities? Insha'Allah, we will continue to discuss this in the coming nights. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khayra. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi tahirin. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa kana ahsana ma fil ahsani shiyamun.